Do you know that college loan debt in America now totals more than credit cards and car loans combined? It's $1.5 trillion. Two out of every three student loan holders are currently in default. For younger generations, this right here is the central broken promise of America. So why is it that college has gotten so obscenely expensive? Well, here's a central perpetrator, and they're banking on you finding them boring. Administrators. College is supposed to be a unique time for young minds to test themselves against the great works of human civilization, to learn how to dig up truth. Campuses have steadily devolved away from that vision into all-purpose fun houses, sports complexes, endless extracurriculars, five-star dining. So schools have had to staff up. Since the 70s, while total student body and faculty have both jumped by about half, total administrators has increased 300%. The average university org chart is like a self-parody of bureaucratic bloat. I found a job title that was simply engagement specialist. Someone tell me what that person does all day. Now you could imagine all these administrators serving as bland functionaries. You know, the toiling gnomes stuck with the unsexy logistics of running a school. But oh no, they've got ambitions, baby. While the ratio of liberals to conservatives among students is about two to one, and faculty it's six to one, it's 12 to one among administrators. This bureaucratic bloat is pumping highly concentrated political propaganda directly into young minds we ignore the reality of those perpetuating racism. White people have no learned ability to grapple with the nuances of mixed race interactions. I'm sorry, what? As a white person, the first step is to work off of the assumption that you really are part of the problem. You have associate deans working overtime to purge violent microaggressions from breakfast cereal. There's one character on this box who is different from all the rest. The only character on the back of this box who's brown and has his hat tilted a little bit to the side, right? This image is problematic. The college administrative apparatus was essential to the rise of Robin DiAngelo, the author of White Fragility. You know, your sister-in-law's go-to vessel for social media virtue signaling that's also the best-selling book in the country? Her career was supercharged by fat consulting contracts and speaking gigs with college administrators. When I hear this from a white person, I don't care if you're pink, purple, polka dotted. Uh, I see people as individuals. Don't ever say that. <laughs> that's all I gotta say. Now, college administrators advance their ideological agenda with the empty corporate jargon of middle management. You know the scientific sounding words that bureaucrats make up to justify their own existence? If you're the administrator of student affairs, you don't have casual conversations with students. And two students stopped me, hey Lamont, we wanna ask you a question. I dove into an intergroup dialogue session on the spot. Ah, yes, the intergroup dialogue session. It's an intergroup dialogue and critical action program. Administrators come wielding the soul sapping weapons of corporate strategy. An innovative five year strategic plan for diversity, equity, and inclusion. This strategic plan is not a single plan. In fact, it is really 52 different plans. Prodigy stands for promoting recruitment, opportunity, diversity, inclusion, and growth. These are nightmare amalgamations of activist and bureaucrat. So you get a little bit of social justice jargon. Intersectionality coalesce with marginalizing oppressions. And some empty corporate buzzwords. Leadership development, institutional advancement, external relations, all of it. Strategic planning and accountability. Mm -mm. That's the answer. And that's where we need to go. Administrators have this perverse incentive to cultivate student grievances, to encourage students to see themselves as frail, fragile wards. Because the less students can run their own lives, the more power accorded to administrators. And if you want to watch this bureaucratic bloat in action, let's take a quick trip to the heartland. 
This is Oberlin, an exclusive liberal arts college in small town Ohio, with an annual tuition north of $60,000 a year. In the fall of 2016, three undergrads are caught trying to steal alcohol from Gibson's, a beloved neighborhood grocery store. A clerk catches them, the students attack him, the students get arrested. Oh my God, why? Can you tell me anything that's going on? Yes, you're being arrested for theft right now. Is there anybody I can talk to, my mother, anything? We're, um, we're charging him with robbery. We're gonna, um, we're gonna so, be, they're gonna be trashing us. Yeah. The students pled guilty to theft, and in open court said the Gibson's owners were not racist. This is Meredith Romando, the pure alpha administrator. She refuses to let truth get in the way of an opportunity to play act a civil rights struggle. Romando starts orchestrating protests of Gibson's. Students flood the owners with death threats. Romando personally hands out flyers condemning the store's long history of racism. She gives the protesters free pizza and soda. Suddenly they're in the middle of a storm that has been crippling to them. We're just a family. Let me get control here for a second. Sorry. No learning, no logic, no reason. If the protesters had done a little bit of digging, they would have learned that Gibson's was founded by a family that fled the South because of its opposition to slavery. Romando's crusade epically backfires. Gibson sues her and Oberlin for defamation and wins a $30 million judgment. But Romando isn't going anywhere. She's still at Oberlin. The typical university has more full-time employees in administration than in instruction and in research combined. And while schools have enlisted a servant class of adjuncts to do much of the work of actually educating, some admins rake in over half a million dollars a year. This is what all your college loan debt is financing. A shadow university system that finds things like the liberal arts and marketable skills to be highly problematic. By making college more expensive and degrading the value of the education itself, the very people bathed in the language of inclusivity are steadily making college more exclusive. Thank you.